I'm Joe Seabrooks, and welcome to another episode of Sensational News, where we celebrate the incredible students and the amazing programs at the Dallas College Cedar Valley campus. Today, we are with some phenomenal students who are with the DeSoto Early College High School. Welcome. How are you all doing? Good. Good. Well, listen, let's start by telling the people who you are. Please share your name and your academic aspirations. My name is Sonia Martinez. I plan to go to UT at Arlington to study civil engineering with the end goal being a project team manager. Fantastic. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, my name is Arissa Linthicum. I plan on attending Prairie View A&M, class of 2026. I plan on majoring in marketing. That will prepare me for my future and journey and business mogul things. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Valerie Villacorta. I'm the valedictorian of the oh, Soto High wow. School. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yay. Valerie the Victorian. <laughs> valedictorian. I plan to pursue a degree in political science at UT Austin and in order to become an immigration lawyer. Oh, that's fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. My name is Unique Wallace. I plan on going to Full Sail University to pursue graphic design in hopes to create logos for my uh, upcoming clothing business. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, love it. Thank you. My name is Andrew Fisher. Uh, I plan on going to either UT Austin or University of Houston to major in finance, and, and I'll become a CFO of a Fortune 500 company. Oh, I love it. The money man. Okay. My name is uh, Gabriel Morales, and uh, I plan on attending Texas A&M Texas University and uh, majoring in industrial engineering, and I plan to become the financial lead. Oh, that's fantastic. We love it. Well, welcome. We're happy to have you here. Now, madam, tell us who you are. My name is Melanie Joshua. I am one of the early college high school counselors on the campus of DeSoto High School. And I'm excited to be a counselor for such a, an outstanding program on our campus at DeSoto High School with DeSoto ISD. That was horrible. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it, it is amazing. It is a pleasure having you all here. Now, I'm just going to jump right into this and just ask the question that everyone wants to know the answer to. Tell us how COVID-19 has impacted your academic experiences. Well, I feel like COVID-19 definitely impacted me. It made me feel, it made me have the need to be more independent, um, probably be able to self-advocate for myself more during COVID, not being able to be in the classroom with the teacher, just knowing that I have to get the things done. Excellent. All right. Well, with COVID-19, it helped me understand that life will throw almost everything at you. And it's all about you adapting, overcoming, and just like going through it. That's right. I love that, Sonia. Yes, indeed. One thing COVID has taught me was how to become an adult, uh, how to time manage, and b basically how to be by myself. Okay. How to be an independent person and managing your time. Yes, indeed. So for me, everyone has different experiences with COVID, but for me, I didn't really feel as overwhelmed as I thought I was going to be because being an early college really prepared me to be independent. And so when it came the time to be independent, when COVID hit, it didn't really put too much pressure on me. Excellent. Okay. I appreciate that. Miss Valedictorian. Gabe. And uh, COVID for me, I believe it was a blessing for myself personally, because it helped me overcome my, uh, doubting myself i just found myself in my education and i thank god for uh, covid oh i love that so you turned it covid into lemonades yes sir yes indeed enough. yes indeed i love that mr fisher so for me covid taught me how to be flexible and patient because everything was constantly changing you know it was our first time going virtual so no one really knew what they were doing we all had to adapt and be susceptible to change i actually love that what observations you had of our students transitioning out of covid I will tell you quickly that I can say that for COVID and the way that it affected our students and the way that we supported our students, it definitely caused us to want to continue to support them, push them and make sure that they were doing what was necessary to complete their coursework while being quarantined. 
it pushed us as a leadership to make sure that we were present even more so because of the disconnect in a sense of not ha having to adjust to the new way of learning. So I would say I'm, I have to commend these now seniors that have taken on the challenge and, and have persevered and are about to graduate this year after Absolutely. COVID. Absolutely. We're so very proud of you. So listen, I, I'll also say this. So we talk a lot about the COVID-19 pandemic. But what's not talked a lot about or enough about is that there's another pandemic, which is a workforce pandemic. There's a lot of folks who absolutely do not uh, want to come back to work in the same way pre-COVID. And so I hear from businesses and industry leaders every day who are struggling, who are looking for folks just like you to join uh, their companies to help them be successful. So tell us, tell the audience, tell our business owners, What's important to you when you are considering working for or applying for a job? Well, when I'm considering, the first thing I am is the starting pay. But The starting if, pay? Yes, the starting okay. pay. But if both jobs were paying the same, I would say that it would be a positive work environment, that I would love to go there, and that um, all the values aligned with everything. But you so the values are critical, yes. but you want that back. I want, yeah, I want that starting pay to be okay. up there. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'll say when I'm um, when I'm applying for a job, the one thing I'll consider in a company is the work environment. The work environment. Okay. And um, how uh, easy communications is. Okay, how they communicate. That's excellent. Yes, ma'am. Miss Unique. One thing that I would like to consider is how organized the company is. I mean, you can you can never uh, plan everything, but being organized sure do help. So you want to organize uh, 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 running like a well-oiled machine. Okay. Miss Valedictorian. So for me, I think it's important that the business or company, wherever I choose to go, truly values their employees and don't abuse them. Okay. And make sure that they give them like sufficient resources in order for them to not only succeed in work, but succeed in their life. Excellent. 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 Okay. And in mine, uh, I believe diversity is like the most important because I like to expand my, my cultures and get to know everybody else, where they came from and uh, get to just know the people. That's right. I, I, I agree with you. Diverse workplace is critical. Yes, sir. But like Arissa said, uh, the values of the company are very important to me. And one value, well, two values that stick out to me are integrity and trustworthiness. Because in the field that I'm going in, which is business, there are a lot of, you know, corrupt and a lot of messed up things in that field. So a company that is on top of their stuff and honest and integrity. Honest and, and integrity. And trustworthy. I, I, yeah. Trustworthy. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. So, Ms. Joshua, as you are preparing young people to work in uh, the field of work or, or adulthood, What's important to you as administrator to make sure that they are prepared for? I'm going to definitely say, even as the question came um, to answer or to help them to answer better, is to definitely have what they already are, sh are sharing with us today, having those values, have, making sure that they know as they are trying to acquire new employment, that they're willing to grow in those places as well to be open-minded to the growth and not just yeah. just primarily, yes, we know that money is important. Benefits are important. That's why y'all are getting this great education. But at the same time, make sure it's a place where you know that you will be able to grow because y'all are so young and there's so much more to learn more in your life as you are transitioning and matriculating and growing through life. It's still good to be able to take value from where you are and to also offer that to the organization that you decide to be a part of as well. Excellent, excellent, I appreciate that. So let me ask this question, I'm gonna shift gears for just a little bit. So um, there's a lot of um, uh, diversity in the music that we listen to, right? And so I remember when I was in your shoes, I had some very important, uh, um, uh, I guess it wasn't a sound, it wasn't a playlist, it was more like a, it was a cassette tape. We, no, I, I'm, I'm old. We had the cassette tape, right? So we had the mixtape. And so, so uh, what are some of the top songs on your playlist uh, that, that, that you listen to right now? 
One song I've been like playing on heavy rotation is this song called Run To You by Stacy. Okay. Now, why is that song heavy in your rotation? Well, um, lately I've been getting into that group a lot. And that was one of their most recent songs they released. Okay. And I just love it so much. I, I've been playing it a lot. Okay. Since. Okay. That's your jam. All right. How about you, ma'am? I would say that anything by Erica Badu and Lauren Hill right now is good. Um, my most favorite song is Love of My Life by Erica Badu. Okay, Dallas is on. All right. Yes, ma'am. So one song that I've been listening to a lot lately is Easy Fuera Ella by Alejandro Sanz. Okay. Because who doesn't love a ballad once in a while, you know? Okay, all right. <laughs> I love that. Ballad by Valedictorian. That's all right. Yes, ma'am. Uh, something I would say that I listen to a lot is Self Care by Mac Moore. Okay. Also, so why is that song your song? Because it's always important to to care for yourself and make sure that your mind is... I love it. Say the name of that song again. Self Care. Self Care. I need some of that myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, Cindy. Yes, sir. So for me, anything by J. Cole. J. Cole. My All favorite right. song by him is Apparently. Okay. And I like that song because it talks about, you know, being grateful and having someone to believe in you. And he always has a good message behind his songs. Absolutely. J. Cole. All right. And uh, mine is uh, it's called Amigo by Little Tekka. And uh, the reason behind this, because uh, I used to play football. And uh, before the games, man, this song used to, like, get me all amped up. Okay, that's yeah. your amped up song. Yes, it, yes, I, it is. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you all for sharing your perspectives. I definitely have to get my music game up to par. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to pause for a short break uh, as we hear a wonderful message from Dallas College. Ellas son las Castillos. Yo tuve que ayudar a mi familia y pues no pude ir a la escuela. Igual, y de joven te tuve a ti y a tu hermana y dos trabajos. Mamá, ahora que ya me estoy graduando de Dallas College, creo que ya puedo hacerme cargo de los tamales. Escucho esto, mamá. La chiquilla se quiere hacer cargo de los tamales. Qué bueno que estás yendo a la escuela porque todavía te falta un montón por aprender. Abuela. No te preocupes, Ceci. Dentro de poco vas a estar preparando una nueva carrera. Dallas College. Welcome back to Sensational News, our video blog where we celebrate the amazing students and the incredible programs at Dallas College Cedar Valley Campus. Again, we are with the phenomenal, the amazing, the incredible students from the Soto uh, Early College High School. Let's talk about pros and cons. Choosing to be in an early college uh, situation is a commitment, right? So what has been some of the pros and cons of you going down this road? Well, for me, I'll say that um, I felt one thing I was worried about when entering early college is like kind of being alone because I had no one to look up to. Like I had no one who went to high school or to college. So I was like on my own. However, the, the students and the teachers were like always there for me. So Excellent. OK, love that. Yes, indeed. I definitely think some pros of early college high school is getting that foundation for college and saving money definitely on college. I will be entering college with an associate's degree, so that's two years off down the drain that I don't have to worry about. So I think that's a definitely pro. Absolutely. I love that. Yes, ma'am. Something that I think all of us can really relate to is having to become independent much quicker and being able to advocate for ourselves. And like, I can say that a lot of us were inherently shy and quiet all throughout middle school, elementary school. But the minute we get to high school, we kind of have to shed all that out because no one else is gonna talk to your professors for you, except for you. Excellent, I love that. Yes, indeed. One thing I would say that is a pro for early college is time management. I do know that uh, coming into high school, I did suck at time management, but. Uh, okay, but you're better now. Yeah, I'm better now. <laughs> yes, indeed. Considering you're about to graduate, which is a social <laughs> degree, I think that's pretty evident. Yes, indeed. Mr. Fisher. Uh, a pro for me would be knowing what to expect when I get to college as far as workload, because coming in, I thought the work was going to be overbearing and too hard. But like they have mentioned, like time management is very important. And, you know, once you figure that out, you'll be okay. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, yeah, and to elaborate, like Andrew, uh, it's not just knowing and like expect knowing, expecting already what you're gonna do in college, but it's just building on, on that uh, that foundation. You already know what to do. 
Excellent. That, I love it. So I'm dying to ask you all this question. So indulge me for a second. Um, each generation, at, when they come of age, they define and create their own language. And I remember the, the, the phrases that were popular at the time when I was a young person. And I'm curious to know, because uh, I have young people in my house, they're teenagers. And sometimes I just, Ms. Joshua, I, I don't know what they're talking about. And so if you all help, help me to uh, give me some, some clues and some cues on a popular language that you use uh, as you communicate. Um, a lot of things that I hear, what well, I say myself is no cap. And that basically means like no lie or you're capping, like you're lying. So cap just means lie now. That's it. So for instance, this video blog is awesome. No cap. No cap. Got you. No, no cap. cap. Okay. I got to put that emphasis on that. No cap. <laughs> All right. Yes, indeed. So, there's one word. Uh, bet. 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 Oh, give me an example. Like, hey. Do you mind if you do this for me? All right, bet. Bet, okay. So, okay, so you would you mind doing the video blog with me? All right, bet. I got you. I got <laughs> you. Love it. Love it. All right. What else we got? Uh, One thing that we do use is fire. Like Fire? Yeah, like Miss Joshua's shoes are fire. Oh, Miss Joshua's it. shoes are fire. Okay, that's a good thing. Because yeah, yeah. if you said my, I would have been like, oh, my shoes. <laughs> no, not that. Okay, good. Okay, got you. All right. Yes, indeed. So another uh, term is W and L. W and L. So it originated with Twitch, the live streaming platform. And so you put it in front of any word. It can be like W means good and L means bad. So an example would be like these are W friends. Like, you know. Okay, W friends. And so if the power went out in the middle of this podcast, We'll be kept, we'll be catching the L. Yes, that would definitely be an L. Okay, awesome. awesome. <laughs> Let's let the power stay on. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Yes. Oh, got another one. What we got? We got uh, that's tough. That's tough. tough. So like, you know how you said like the lights will go off. That's tough. You that's know what I'm saying? Tough. Okay. That's tough. But it, but is it a but positive read? Uh, yeah, it could be. It could be positive. Okay, give me you a positive. You'd be example. like, I like your shoes. Them tough. You know okay. Saying? Okay. You got them yeah. J's on. That's tough. Okay. Tough. I got tough. you. Okay. So rough. So tough out here. I love it. Okay. So, so <laughs> I got to ask you this. You are big time singers. All of you. Mm -hmm. Tell us, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your freshman self? about the experience that you just just completed um what i would tell my freshman self is that everybody that's in my corner is not on my team and that whoa 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 <laughs> say that again i say that again. everybody that is in your corner oh. is not on your team oh i love that that's tough that's tough that's tough <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's no cap either yeah because everybody that you're around you they're not going to the same place as you so it's important to know that Everybody that's in your corner is not on your team. Oh, I love that. Yes, indeed. For me, um, what I would have told my freshman self is that uh, the goal isn't to be uh, the best to others. It's to be someone you're not ashamed to be. Oh, wow. Ooh, not to be the best. Good. Okay, I love that. That's yeah. amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One thing that I would tell my freshman self is that everything changes. Like my freshman year, I wanted to go into business and I didn't really focus on fashion, but now coming into my senior year, I want to focus on fashion and get like my company out there and stuff like that. Excellent. So change is inevitable. So yeah. embrace the change. That's good. Man, we all need to, to, to learn that. Yes, indeed. So one thing I would tell my freshman self is that you shouldn't be afraid to ask for help because this is a completely new experience to us right. coming in as freshmen. And a lot of the times we may feel like put into a corner. Mm -hmm. So asking your peers for help isn't a bad thing because you're all going through this together. So you should try to figure out how to succeed together. I love that. Not a shame to ask for help. Okay. I was, uh, somebody would tell me don't procrastinate. Because freshman year, <laughs> I kind of procrastinated, but and then I started evolving and I just learned to get a get a, a step ahead of your assignment 
and just uh do instead of doing the work that you're doing right now do the work that's done next week i love that i love that getting ahead of the game yes, so sir. for me i would tell my freshman self to be your biggest fan and to also be a self-advocate because if you want someone to know something about you they're not going to know just by looking at you you have to go out and tell them and you know sell your brand absolutely and i think there's a lot of us a lot of people my age hadn't figured that out yet so yeah so miss joshua when 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 you are uh working with your team uh at uh the soto what's most important to you when you're uh recruiting or or uh, uh going through applications uh for folks who can who are trying to get into the early college well primarily i, I am going to speak on the fact that throughout the early college program for any school is to help promote college for the family. Um, those that might not have actually would have been able to be um, able to go to college as far as from their particular family. Um, so I'm gonna push early college anywhere because of the fact that you are going to be able to acquire those college courses in a, for, for free as I was recruiting for eighth grade, coming into ninth grade, rising eighth graders going to ninth grade. That's one of the biggest things that I would put out there for them as far as my presentation, take advantage. You have the opportunity. We are looking for students that are motivated to be scholars or in that scholarly mode of wanting to excel academically. However, we're not going to shortchange a person that may not may have the desire may not always have the right grades per se or the higher grades we want to find those students that are well-rounded mm -hmm. but that have the passion and the desire to want to take on this challenge on acquiring their their um, college courses now as a high school student and to continue to want to strive to get to the next level um, so as we are actually this week in uh, next week, we'll be passing out or, or giving to our eighth graders and the area of DeSoto, their acceptance letters into our program. It's been really exciting just to even see their faces light up because they took the chance. Even throughout COVID and quarantine, they did not stop on wanting to be superior or even want to have the desire to continue their education and the value in education. And that's the most important right now, because even during this time, a lot of our students, hey, we're at home. We're, when you're not in that environment, sometimes you do lose that that zeal. Yep. You know, so not everybody can, is motivated internally. Sometimes that external that external uh, motivation is important. But at the same time, we're going to keep pushing our students. We're going to keep supporting our students to let them know that they are they are capable and they can acquire their goals, attain their goals, and we're here to support them in that effort. That's fantastic. I thank you. I appreciate that perspective. Yes, indeed. Oh, you get an applause. You must do that all day, every no, day. No, they don't get to hear me talk. Oh, okay, excellent, but excellent. they will. They will. I, I love it. So here's something that the world does not know. You are uh, one of a handful of students in our country that will actually get your associate's degree before you get your high school diploma. How does that feel? Honestly, it feels like a blessing to me. Um, I'm the first one in my family to be able to do that and I feel proud. Um, it's definitely setting the bar for my family, so yeah. Excellent, all right, thank you. I agree with Arissa. I'm the first generation for both high school and college and my, par my parents, they're just like so proud of me to make it this far because so many of my family members haven't. And personally, uh, it was a hard journey to get all the way up to graduation, but I'm so proud of myself. Absolutely, we're proud of you too. Yes, ma'am. Honestly, it's like, like she said, it's a blessing. Um, and I hope that I can motivate my sister and also my little brother to- Do the same. Do the same thing, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. For me, I feel like it's such a big accomplishment, especially since my parents are both immigrants and they didn't get to go to college. And I just feel blessed that I could set an example for my younger sisters. Absolutely. I love that. Well, uh, for me, it feels surreal because uh, I'm the youngest and my, my parents, they're uh, immigrants. And uh, my other siblings, they didn't, get, they didn't get to go to college. It's just me and my older sister were the only ones that went to college. And it just feels surreal. Wow. Well, you all deserve it. 
Yes, sir. How you feel? I'm also very proud because uh, a high school diploma is also a big accomplishment, but also an uh, associate's degree is too. So, you know, absolutely, Absolutely. Well, we are indeed proud of you. Thank you all for sharing your story. Last question. And this is the most important question to me personally. Uh, you know, what is absolutely um, evident, non-negotiable, factual, we come into this earth and we leave. And when your time is done on this planet, what legacy will you love to leave for those who you leave behind? Well, I will say is that um, there's going to be so many outsiders and even just the system in general that, that will push you down and all you have to do is persevere through. Okay, just persevere. Love it. Love it. I want to leave behind my name, my brand, my generational wealth. I want When I leave this earth, I want them to know that I was somebody I didn't fail, that I was successful. Absolutely. Okay, love it. Your name and generational wealth. Love it. For me, I would say that I never tried to be the best. I just tried to be my best. Because the second you compare yourself to someone else, you're automatically second place. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see why you use a valid story. <laughs> Excellent. Love it. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Uh, one thing that I would like to leave behind is that no matter who has met me or whose life I have ever been in, I want to leave some type of peace in their life. Oh, I love that. So everyone you encounter who know you, they walk away with peace. Yeah, yeah, whether it's mentally or physically. Okay, love that. Wonderful. So. I would say to leave the world a better place than you found it. And that might sound like huge, but it can be something very small. And another thing would be to create content, like always create so you can leave something behind that you're proud of. Awesome. So constantly create and whatever you create, it's, it's, the world is better mm -hmm. for it. Love it. Yes, indeed. And uh, mine is uh, letting people know that it's good to be yourself. Like you don't got to be rich and famous for somebody to like you. For example, you don't got to be LeBron James. You could be yourself, that's and right. just people around you, uh, if they love you. And that's okay. That's it. I love that. Well, I appreciate that so much. You all are an amazing young people, and thank you so much for giving us your time today. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is our time. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Sensational News, where we celebrate the incredible students and the amazing programs at the Dallas College Cedar Valley campus. Remember, at Cedar Valley, our mascot is the suns because the sun never sets on the possibilities. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take care. This is Camila. She's a student at Dallas College. Well, why don't you go to college with me? How am I going to pay for that? Dallas College has scholarships and financial aid. They also have free dart passes. I'll help you enroll tomorrow. Dallas College.